Today we're going to go into some parallel compression techniques for kick and snare a little deeper than we have in the past. If you notice in the, notice in the corner of the screen I've got uh, attack and release times for the DBX160 XT. The reason I put that there is because I think it's a good starting point. I'm actually not using these exact numbers today, but I started and then I, I, I tweaked it to fit the situation. But this is a handy piece of information to have because the 160 XT is, is definitely the, the go-to drum compressor. Now, why do I parallel compress? Um, usually on kicks and snares, what we're trying to do is either get the attack a, a little a little tighter or either we're trying to enhance the low end without increasing the volume overall volume of the kick and snare and and the net effect is that it just seems to become more noticeable in the mix for various reasons we'll go into that in a moment but mostly parallel compression is used to preserve the essence of the original sound but to enhance it. So if you put the same compressor across your, your, your track, like your kick or your snare, it's gonna alter the whole sound. Uh, today's producers and, and, and artists are, are pretty savvy about the sound they want, so it's, it's better to not alter the original sound that much, but to enhance it. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's jump right in. So I'm gonna play you a little piece of music. Uh, this is the kicks and drums from a song called I Wanna Know by AVM, a band out of Chicago, excellent band, Robert Mackey. Today I'm just gonna play you the drums and let you, let you hear a little piece of the drums without any parallel compression. Now, if you'll look at the screen, you'll notice that uh, this is muted and this is muted. Let's focus on the kick. This is my parallel chain for the kick. So let's analyze what we're doing. I'm using a rather slow attack time, a little slower than the DBX times, and then a, a, a kind of a medium release time. Now, if I, take, if I take this off, what we're hearing is just the kick. So, so this is what I'm doing compression-wise. So you can see I'm adding a little bit of attack and the bottom changes. Now the bottom changes in a way that I'm not happy but I like everything else. So let's supplement the bottom. Now you'll notice I'm adding quite a bit of 60. That can be, uh, this should be adjusted per song. Now I didn't want my parallel chain add too much of the attack but if I did, watch this. So here we go, with, without, now I have it a hair louder than I would normally mix it in just so you can hear the difference, but that's something you experiment with, it's on its own track. What I like to do when I start is I start with my parallel chain, I listen to it, then I turn the volume of the parallel chain completely off, and then I mix it back in while we're in the entire mix, or at least in the entire drum mix. Let's check out the snare. Now on the snare, I decided to use the UAD 160. Now this, we call, in, uh, to distinguish between the 160, like this one and the 160s that are the single rack space that's so commonly used on kicks and snares. We usually call this the, the 160 with the VUs or 160 VU. I can't even remember what the real name is because that's what I've always called it. Now, I don't have choice of attack and release time on this, but it turns out most of the time for me, it's exactly what I want on a snare. So let's, let's, let's hear what we're doing. Nothing, compression, and a little EQ. 
Now let's let's see what that's doing inside the track, inside the, the snare sound itself. With, without, Here again, if on both of these examples, you'll notice that the, 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 the perception that the snare just got clearer, easier to find, easier to hear, and kind of takes a step forward. Now, once again, the snare is a little louder than, than I would normally use it because it's changing the sound a bit too much, but uh, you can mix those back in. So remember, parallel compression is a way to preserve the essence of the original sound, but to enhance it and to make it feel like, like, like it just took a step forward in the mix. Uh, when you listen to, to the practitioners of this, the guys that really do it well, Michael Brower, you'll hear, you'll, you, you, you can't hear the before and after, but you'll notice, you notice that, that his mixes have, um, uh, they're, they're just in your face. I don't know how to describe it, but not, not that over compressed in your face because he's preserving the dynamics of the original signal, which, which, which we, we all know the importance of dynamics in music, but at the same time, we're getting the benefit of some compression that's holding a part of the sound up there even. So it's that part of the sound that you're holding even is the part that's gonna enhance things for you. Okay, now let's see what we've done. I'm gonna play you with the, without the parallel chain in the drums one more, one more time. And then, I'm gonna, and then you'll see me turn the two parallel chains off after about a couple of bars. Pretty cool, huh? Gives you options, gives you techniques, gives you some tools to solve some of the problems we routinely run into in mixing, and that's how do we preserve the essence and dynamics of an original sound, but make it better, make it better, make it mo. Mo and better is always good in mixes. <laughs> okay, guys, next time.